Hey guys, we're going to be working on the login screen. So to do this, to help us out, we're going to be changing our routes around a little bit. So by default, we're going to the sign up page. It would be really annoying to be have to click login uh, to see what the login screen looks like every time. So I'm just going to swap it and make login the default route. That way it's fast for debugging. We load the login screen right away. Now our login page is going to look very similar to our sign up one, so we can copy and paste this. But before I do, I wanted to mention one thing. So in our submit function, at the end here, right here we are clearing the state, and we don't really need to do this, so I'm going to comment it out. And the reason we don't need to do this is because we're switching to another component, right? That's what this .props history push is doing afterwards, which is going to unmount the component and clear it anyway. Now if we end up not needing or needing to clear this later, we can always comment it out, but no need to uh, re-render when we're just going to change screens anyway. All right, so let's copy this and paste it into the login. And we're just going to change things um, that we need to for this. And really the first big change is our text field component. Since we're using this in both places, it doesn't make sense to copy it. Let's just go ahead and be um, good developers and make a components folder. And inside of that, we are going to create a text field. And then we're going to uh, move our um, guy, this one, and we're going to move it over here to text field. And so he's going to need the, not the default state, but styles. And then he also needs some of this and we can't forget react. So now we're just putting him in a separate function and we're going to import him to use him. And I'm going to export default, export default. All right, so this component's good to go. So now on our sign up and login, we need to import instead of just having the class there. So I can delete that and I can delete that. And now we can get rid of this little ESLint warning or disabling the warning. And now I'm going to import text field. And we can copy that because we're going to do that in our login page as well. Oops, I copied the wrong thing. And we don't need this stuff anymore. And is our sign up page good? Do I need to change? Yep. I don't see any red lines. I think we're good now. Okay, so let's focus on login. So we don't need ESLint. We don't need name because the login, we just need email, password. We should rename this to login. Um, we're going to have to still change the text of things, so that's fine. Our submit function, we're going to come back to. A lot of this is going to stay similar, though. Um, I guess instead of saying response.data.signup, we can say login. Um, so I have response.data.login.token is going to be the same because we're, we get the same response if we look at our auth payload or schema.graphql. We return the same thing from sign up as we do with login, right? This auth payload, which has a token for us. Alrighty, so instead of go to login page, we're going to say go to sign up because maybe you got to the login page somehow and you really just need to go to the sign up page instead. So down here, I'm gonna say go to sign up. And really I can replace these. Now the title of the buttons. So now I wanna log in or say um, create account, flip them. This mutation should be a login mutation. And so we're going to have to change the inside of that. And our component is called login now. So we need to fill this. We no longer need a name field. And also, we're showing errors for email. We should do the same for password. Because there's a chance that they give us an invalid password on the login page. All right, so that looks good. We can get rid of the name here. There might be some other things we need to fix, but this looks pretty good. I don't see too much red here. I see our app is crashing, but that is because we have not filled out the login mutation. 
So I like to do the same thing as I did for the sign up is to type it over here. So mutation, we're gonna have a email, which is a string and a password. And we're gonna log in with our email and our password variables. And again, we just care about the token. So why not, let's make it pretty, copy it, move it over here, give that a save. Hopefully we're done crashing and we are, awesome. Now we wanna handle errors slightly differently than how we're doing it here. Cause there's really two type of errors we can get. Uh, email is bad or password is bad. So instead of trying to parse the error on the client side, I'm gonna to send to the client exactly what the error is so it's very easy. So I'm no longer gonna have a try catch here. I can totally delete that. I'm expecting the response to be good every time. Otherwise we have a big problem. Um, either like our server's down or something. So now we need to change response and Let's come on over to here to our schema. So now instead of just returning auth payload, I wanna return um, any errors we might get. So I wanna show you guys what it's currently doing. So auth.typescript, so go to source, resolvers, mutation, auth.typescript, you'll see the login. So right now it's throwing errors whenever there's a user or invalid password, or invalid user. Since we know these errors ahead of time are gonna happen, um, I don't want to just return the error. That way we, it, we don't have to like parse the error messages out on the client side. So to do this, I'm going to create a type called error. And it's going to have a field, which is going to be a string and a message. And how this is going to work is let's say I want to display an error invalid password. I set the field to password, the message to invalid password. And then on my client side, I'm going to parse this and show that error. And so now I'm gonna create a login response, which is gonna return a payload, which is gonna have an auth payload and error. And both of these are nullable, because sometimes there's a payload, sometimes there's an error, and we're gonna return this from the login, so login response. So instead of just pat, uh, returning auth payload. Now here I could return more than one error, but really we're just gonna get one error at a time, so I'm just gonna return one like this. And then in our login we now, oops, not this one, our auth login over here, we need to actually return the correct stuff. So if we don't get a user, now we're gonna return an error. And the field is email. And what do we want the message to be? Uh, I don't know, maybe like no user found. And we can just delete that. And we want to do the same thing for our invalid passwords. So now this is going to be password. And we can just say invalid password. And now we can't just return the token user. We need to wrap this in a payload. There we go. And we can tap that over. Cool. So now our server is good. We are now returning our errors regularly and if we don't get any errors we return the token so now in our login over here in our response i want to say const we could either get a payload or an error and this is coming from response.data.login um so if i'm just going to do a simplest statement if payload right otherwise it's going to be null so else. So if we get a payload, we want to do this stuff right here. We want to store the token. So that's going to be payload.token. And oh, also, we need to change what our mutation looks like down here, but we'll do that in a second. Um, payload.token, otherwise we have an error, right? And what we're going to do to handle this is we're going to say this.setState and we're gonna say errors, and one of our errors is the field name is gonna be error.field, and the value is gonna be error.message. 
and then we can also say is submitting is false. So now if we get an error, what are we doing? We are grabbing it, right? So we're grabbing it from the response and then I'm doing this thing here. So this is gonna get the value of the error. So if this field is called password or email and we're saying the message and then we're updating. And remember down here, we're conditionally checking whether we have an e errors.email or password and displaying it if it exists. All right, I'm not sure if I have an error or is it just styling, looks like it's styling. I think this is good to go. Actually, no, it's not. I forgot we need to change this. So refresh over here and let's make sure we have our new response. If we look at our schema, we see a login response. So now we can't just grab a token, right? We need to add a payload and then get our token. And then from here, we have to get our error and get the field and the message. So let's copy the inside of that, paste it. All right, so let's give this a try now. So we're not console logging anything. So let's console.log payload.token. And we should see something if the error goes wrong. So let's see an error first. So let's do a bad email. So no user found, nice. So now bob at bob.com, this user exists. Let's do bob too, because I actually remember the password for that. Login, now we're getting an invalid password. Now let's actually type a good password. I think it's just bob. And nice, we get the token. So we get the token, we set it in async storage over here and then we push the products. And this is really all we have to do on our login page. I think we're good to go. So that's it for this video, guys. You saw how we can actually uh, send a mutation over and then grab the response, parse out any errors, um, and actually handle the errors on the server side, right, with our auth. So returning the errors like so, and updating our schema appropriately. Thanks for watching. In the next video, what we'll do is, uh, I think either create like an intermediary screen to tell us whether we should go to sign up our login or to go directly to products. But stay tuned, we'll get into that soon.